Welcome to the Sound Off Network, where we put the T in teacher. I'm Mrs. Phelps. And I'm Mrs. Roddy. And class is now in session. Let's talk about it. So your do now for today is to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this video. The power of the potential D is real. Oh my goodness, this story is absolutely crazy, Mrs. Roddy. What's going on with this story here? Honey, I have been following this story for the past 11, 12 days. There is this correction officer named Vicki White. She's been with this corrections facility for the past 20 years, was all set to retire. She breaks out this guy, Casey White, and the way that she does it is because she takes these inmates to their court appointments. So she took, she told them that they were taking him to a court appointment for a mental health evaluation and they were never to be found again. So there has been this witch hunt for them. Some people were thinking, oh, well, did he do something to her? Did he coerce her into this? But then as time went on, they looked into it and she knew the protocol that she was not supposed to be the only one in the car with him, taking him back and forth to these things. So she knew the protocol. So as time progressed, they knew that she was part of a part of this plan and things have just been unfolding day by day by day about this crazy situation. So you mean to tell me that this correctional officer broke this inmate out of prison and they were escaping like Bonnie and Clyde? Honey, they are the 2022 Bonnie and Clyde. Do you hear me? Oh my goodness. I just can't fathom because when you read about this woman, Vicki White, and you hear all of these positive things about her. I mean, she was an exemplary employee. She did everything right. People looked up to her. What may cause her to just flip the script like this? I don't so get what, it. How old was she? What do we know about her? Nikki White is 56 and Casey White is 38. So she got her little young tender in the prison system. <laughs> I just wonder like what he could have told her. And I know that she's been with this place for 20 years. She was high in rank, all set to retire. She had just put in for her retirement the same week as she pulled this stunt. They found guns and money in their car. She had sold her house before this incident. Well below market value. She sold her home for $95,000 and her house was worth 235. So she was trying to hurry up wow. and get sell that house so that she could have some cash. That picture that's floating around, that is the picture of the cash that was remaining. And they said she was living with her mother mm -hmm. after she sold her house. Right, her mother describes her as just like someone who would just come home, go to work, walk her dog, you know, just a very simple life. But maybe that was part of the problem. Maybe her life was too routine. Wow, so tell us about this inmate, Casey White, 38. Now, did he plan this or was this Vicky White's idea? I don't think <laughs> that Casey White was smart enough to plan something to this uh, measure. You know, what we do know about him is that he was more of a spontaneous, on the dime criminal. Like he didn't think things through. He did it because he was constantly getting into trouble. Whereas Vicky, complete opposite of that. Clean record, exemplary person who's like a mother fig in the office. But this whole thing just really ended tragically. But I want to just kind of go back and talk about like how she planned this out. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So she actually sold her house. So we know that she needed the cash. She purchased a new car, which is the car that they, when they dumped her patrol car, that was the car that they got into. Okay. We know that she put in her for her retirement. She had purchased clothes for him. Wow. Um, yeah, she knew that she wouldn't be questioned because, like you said, she's the second in charge. So she was giving him special treatment before this planned getaway. Oh, yeah, way before the planned getaway. Yeah, inmates have already confirmed that, you know, that he was getting special treatment. They, they knew, they didn't think that there were any physical contact between them but there was definitely some type of special treatment that he was getting like more food more privileges things like that the other inmates did notice but how she was able and this is since 2020 how was she able to live this life and not tell anybody nobody knew about this relationship that she had with this man 
Well, you know what they say, when inmates have a love affair going on in the prison system, the correctional officers actually let them jack off on them. So mm. I don't know if that was what was going on in this case. Sometimes it goes under the radar with the uh, correctional officers, but I'm pretty sure the inmates knew about it. Yeah, of course they did. They had to have noticed something. They had to have noticed something going on because how were they even ha able to have these types of conversations and planning this? You know right. what I'm saying? Right. But it's just it's absolutely crazy. The manhunt for them um, actually ended yesterday. And I on... think I said they found them at a hotel, right? And she had a wig on. Yeah, she was wearing a brown wig. She's Come a blonde. On, Vicky. You could do better. <laughs> but than no, that. but here's why I'm mad though. Like that's the story. But here's why I'm mad. Mm -hmm. You've had this all planned out. You all left. I believe y'all left that building at 9:30 in the morning. Y'all could have been in like Mexico somewhere. Y'all could have been in Canada by now. Y'all y'all left Alabama and y'all only drove six hours to, to Indiana. Indiana. Mm -hmm. In 11 days, that's all y'all were able to accomplish. It took them 11 days to find them. Mm -hmm. Imagine if they had left the country. Mm -hmm. So they could have been like living the life somewhere. Like I'm suspecting that there was some other things going on behind the scenes. And she was the professional and the planner and he was not so much. And he was just the erratic person. So I'm thinking that when they got out, he started whispering stuff in her ear and maybe diverting her original plans. Maybe. Um, and obviously, I mean, at the, at the end of this whole manhunt, she ended up shooting herself. There was like this high speed chase and they ended up ramming into her car and she shot herself and died from those injuries and he just kind of gave up himself very easily he's cooperated with the police he's let them know everything that's happened all of those details aren't out yet but he shared a lot with the police it's almost like he knew like he just wanted to get out for a few days he knew it was going to end eventually I think he just wanted a few days of freedom right she gave that to him she risked it all for him yeah and he's like well I guess it's time for me to go back to jail now Wow, because it sounds like this was something that's called bad boy syndrome. Mm. Histobrystophilia is the attraction and or sexual interest in those who commit crimes, particularly heinous and violent crimes, such as rape and murder. All right, and this is from Dr. Casey Jordan, who is a criminologist and professor of justice and law. And this professor said that Vicki White surely believed that she was in love with Casey White. Mm -hmm. When her mother is describing her, it, her life was very boring. Yeah, mm -hmm. walk her dog, come home. She, I think that this woman, she may have been going through a little bit of a midlife crisis, possibly. Or she may have just wanted some dick. <laughs> <laughs> D. The power of the potential D, honey. Yeah. <laughs> and the crazy part is they found they they somebody spotted them at a car wash. Like, why are y'all getting a car wash and y'all are on the run? That's of all me. places, y'all are spotted at a car, car wash. wash for. She wanted to go out like Bonnie and Clyde and baby. She did she that. Did. So what have we learned today, class? Lesson number one. Stop romanticizing the bad boy image. It may be exciting in the moment, but the violent criminal past could backfire on you. Lesson number two, think before you act. We make emotional decisions when we think with our hearts and our hormones. Logically ask yourself, does this make sense for my life? And lesson number three, if you've been in a sexual drought, the prison D is not worth it. Like the video, share the video, subscribe, and leave us a comment.